So what I'm doing right now is going through my walk-in and pulling out all the stuff in here that was cooked last week that I need to use up so that it doesn't go bad. Um, I have not cleaned out this refrigerator out in a while, so it is a little bit of a disaster. Um, but this is what I'm gonna do first, is just go through and make sure nothing in here is gonna go bad because it really stinks to have food waste. Even though food waste in our house goes either to the dogs, the pigs, or the chickens, um, you know, I feel like at least if I can try and keep that down to a minimum, that would be great. So that is my step right now. took a smoked ham and and I cooked it overnight and made a like ham broth with that so right now I'm just stirring it around a little bit to break up the fat and I'm straining the fat out of it um, there's plenty of fat in the meat that we don't need any extra fat floating along along the top of the soup so I'm taking the fat out now pulling the ham and the bones out so that I can pick all the meat off the bones, pick away any fat, any skin, anything that I don't want in the soup, and then return all the meat back to the soup, back to the stock, and then start adding extra things into that stock. So around this knuckle bone is all of this clear jelly, okay? Instead of going to the grocery store and buying collagen, like this is collagen in its real form. Eat it. It, it doesn't have any flavor. It doesn't taste strong. It tastes like the meat that you're eating. It's practically flavorless. So, I mean, instead of paying money to buy powders that have been processed, just break the collagen and all the connective tissue off the bones. Stick on your feet. Look at this whole thing of connective tissue. I'm going to squish it up to little tiny pieces so that way my kids don't really notice. And stick it on in the soup. Here I'm taking the leftover mashed potatoes that were in the walk in refrigerator and I'm breaking them up and putting that into the soup. And then now also adding all of the butternut squash that the kids helped me grate and prepare. Putting that in and turning the heat up and bringing it up to a simmer. Alright, I have absolutely no idea how this soup is going to taste. Um, I have a smoked ham end that I thought, you know, soup would be really good. And when I started telling my kids and my family about the soup that I was making, um, I love like a pork and bean pea soup and they just about lost their minds. They all made it very clear that they would not be eating my pork and bean soup. So I thought, all right, well, maybe I'll do like a pork and potato soup. Well, I had two butternut squash sitting on my counter for about a month and a half. And I finally said, you know what? I'm gonna put butternut squash in it and just kind of see what it looks like, how it tastes. Um, I also have leftover mashed potatoes in here because I me mean, who doesn't love potatoes in soup. So I have no idea how this is gonna taste. It could be a complete blah, but it might actually work. And if it doesn't taste good, I will not waste food. I will end up eating it myself. 
definitely need more salt. So it is a cold and brisk day here in the beginning of January in Maryland. We're just getting headed out to get chores done, milking, um, checking on everybody. We're gonna get a little bit of snow and sleet starting shortly. Actually, I can see it's kinda uh, starting to precipitate a little bit. So I need to run out and make sure all the animals are taken care of, are comfortable, warm, fed, have fresh water, and then I need to milk the cow. I actually don't love milking the cow when it's this cold because <clears throat> I have to roll my sleeves up a little bit and uh, <laughs> I'm just a big baby, but I do it. <sighs> um, so normally I can uh, calf share and just milk when I need it, but it just so happens that I need it today. So <clears throat> I'm gonna start getting some of these chores done and then probably go back in the house and hang out and probably clean the basement, do stuff I need to do. get squirrely get him some water looks like the pigs are out there up moving around <clears throat> trying to bite me and then take me down and eat me alive. I say maybe he's watching too many Criminal Minds episodes. Day, I am going to open up the rope that runs across this field to keep the cows from going to the far side of it. Uh, I'm going to remove that and allow them to graze the full pasture. I don't want them hungry at all. <laughs> I want them to be fully fed so they can stay nice and warm. And you can probably see right behind the cows where the grass color changes a little bit. This forward pasture closest to me is grazed down and the pasture behind them has not been opened up and so it's grazable now. So 
saw the fence down uh, up here as soon as I opened the, the pen up for the cows, I saw the far fence was down by the road. Probably a deer trying to jump over. So I took a little sprint up here to get to the fence before the cows saw it. So now I'm just tightening up fencing and making sure there are no other areas that they could escape at any point today. I'll show you what I'm tightening up now. Now back across the field to my ride. If anybody ever needs to get steps in, farm life is the way to go. Now I need to milk Daisy still, and she has decided to make her way up to this end of the road, or this end of the field towards the road, and I have to convince her to come down to the barn. Hey girl! I'll tell you what, find yourself a dairy cow that comes when she's called. Moo moo! Good girl, Daisy do! All right, so I'm partially half tempted to just milk you out here in the field today. Would that be so bad? Whoa, would that be so bad? You want some grain? Come on, baby love, let's go. Skinny mini. That's her calf who's been waiting all night to nurse, even though he doesn't need it because he's a year old. I worry about the animals being out in the rain when it's cold. My answer is yes, I do worry. And that is why it is important to me to have the cows in a location where I can see them because none of those cows look cold to me. You can see by their body language that they're grazing, they're standing out completely happy. If they were cold, you would see them hunched over and um, they, would, they would just look cold. I can't really describe it other than when you see a cold animal, you know what a cold animal looks like. So they're happily grazing. They're not standing still, like their heads are down, but when an animal is cold, their head will be down to the ground and they won't be grazing. They'll just be standing there with their rump kind of hunched underneath them and just standing there. So these are my happily rained on grazing cows. Now I thought the soup tasted really great. I enjoyed it. But I love butternut squash soup and I also love ham soup. And most of my family members hate both soups. So this is kind of a double whammy of deliciousness for me and awful for them. The soup. You don't like it? Oh, the squash makes it taste like omelets. So as you can see, it is a beautiful day today. The cows made it through the rain, the sheep are all out. <laughs> so nobody was cold. We checked on them a little bit later, made sure everybody was okay. And now it's sunny out and everyone's drying off. Hey guys. Got a little bass last night. 